Oh, here's a look at your Bridgeport Purple Knights. Familiar opponent for the Brown Bears. Again, they were down in Bridgeport just last weekend for that quad meet. Also featured Rhode Island College and Talladega. Bears picked up the win over the anchor woman in Talladega, but did lose, or edged, really, by Bridgeport. Take a look at some of the top performers for Bridgeport last week in the bars, and certainly that Abby Kenny score stands out. Team as a whole, 48.850. Pretty impressive. A lot of familiarity between these teams. They also squared off against one another in Uncasville a few weeks before that. GEC opponents, you know, there's really no there's no surprises at this point, Scott. Yeah, no, there you see the the uh, bars rotation for the Purple Knights. Kennedy will lead it off, followed by Imberlina O'Coin Sepulveda and Noakes Hernandez anchoring it. And then they'll have some exhibition performances on the bars with Viles and Starrick. So Bridgeport starting on the bars, which means that the Bears themselves will be starting on the vault. Let me take a look at their vault rotation. Yeah, so it's going to start with Jessica Lynn, Emily Ford, Lauren Kramer, Angela Zing, Sophia Dewar, and then, of course, Julia Bedell. One thing in gymnastics generally, your, your top performers or the performers you expect to get the best scores are going to go fifth and sixth. Don't see any exhibitionists lined up uh, at this juncture for the Bears. We'll see if that changes. And, of course, there's a look at Coach Brittany Harris. Now in her second season here on College Hill, Oregon State alumna class of 2016, former all Pac-12 for the Beavers. This is a home gym in which she has never lost a meet. The Bears are perfect 11-0 here at the Pizzatola Center since the start of the 23 season. And a little extra motivation today. Of course, it is senior day, so the seven members of the Brown University Gymnastics Class of 2024 will be honored at the conclusion of this event. And uh, a nice start to the day, I'm sure you'd agree, as one of those seven seniors, Allie Lowe. Uh, had the honor of singing our national anthem and did a terrific job at that. Very nice job by Allie Lowe, certainly pulling double duty today. She's one of seven seniors on this team, along with Asta Farrell, Lauren Kramer, Lauren McEwen, Lara Swords, McKenna Wiener, and Angela Zing. you got to remember, Scott, their first year as would-be gymnasts here at Brown was wiped out due to the pandemic, right. the winter of 20 into 21. So really only uh, three full seasons competing in uh, – I guess this is true of any college athlete who lost some time due to COVID. Uh, they've really done a remarkable job given the poor hand they were dealt to begin their careers. Yeah, I really do marvel at the you know resilience, I would say, of the young men and women, uh, not just at Brown, but throughout college athletics and in general that had to survive the pandemic, whether it affected maybe your junior or senior years of high school or your first, in this case, year of college, you know, not an easy thing, right? Yep. I mean, things were different in the world back then, and it's nice that we are back to normal yes. once again. Yeah, we're about we're about four years out from really the, I guess the beginning, I would call it. I just remember Rudy Gobert testing positive in the NBA, and that shut us down on March 11th, 2020. And we have Jessica Lynn there going for Bridgeport. Good-looking rotation, stuck the landing on the vault. Let's take another look. Yeah, well done. little hop there at the end, but uh, well, well done by Jessica. You know, on the vault, you know, there's, there's a number of things you're looking for. Obviously, you need that great run. Build up the speed so you can get the power, you can get the drive, and eventually get that height and stick the landing. And the height's the name of the game there at the end, and you can't get it without that run in the lead-up. Or yeah. take a look at some bars. Got to get nice and vertical on the bars. As we know, this is Abigail Kenny. The Bridgeport, good transition. Nice and vertical up top. What will she do for her landing? A little skip at the end, but still not bad. Yeah, well done. And, and likewise, what are some of the keys you're looking for when performing on the bars? Well, you know, certainly uh, judges are looking for your handstands to be vertical. They want the release and reattachment to the bars to be clean. And obviously, you need to have a good dismount and stick that landing. And here is Emily Ford. Emily Ford being nice and patient here, making sure that everything's all set at the far end of the vault there. Career high of 9700 on the vault for Emily. She 
She's off. And maybe a little skip at the end, but nice rotation coming over the vault for Ford. And you see Ford had a lot of speed. Take another look. Quick tuck, not a ton of height. Able to get down. Ford, the only gymnast for Brown uh, from the Ocean State here. Originally from Barrington. Went to Barrington High School, and her club was the Prestige Fitness and Gymnastics Center. She's an all-around competitor. And now here is Olivia Imbralina. Excuse me for the, you see the Bears. And there is Imbralina getting set for the bars. And Berlina, a junior from Pittsburgh, attended Mount Lebanon High School. And Jim Kana incorporated her club. Obviously, all these girls, in addition to competing for their high schools when there was a team there, they were club gymnasts as well. That's where you really hone your craft. And Berlina, a junior, and here we go with the Bears on the vault. Once again, and a nice clean landing there for lauren kramer that was good looking from kramer one of the seniors we're celebrating today very versatile gymnast who will compete at the vault the balance beams and her feet were pretty good there at the end it's tough to really stick that landing that's what separates the scores from your nine sevens up to your nine eight nine eights and nine nines see Brittany harris having a good time she's relaxed i think trying to relax her student athletes as well. Get a really nice crowd here at the Pizzatola Sports Center on Sunday. Not a lot else going on, uh, at least Brown related this afternoon. I know it's a big weekend, and obviously a great job by the men's basketball team yesterday down in New Haven. Yeah, a nationally ranked women's lacrosse program picked up another victory as well. Back to back games with 20 goals. Yeah. How about that? Men's lacks oh so close down. Ooh, in that would have been a Maryland. great one down at Maryland, but a strong performance by the men's lacrosse program on the road against one of the top teams in the nation. This will be Zing. Oh, very well done. Really no wobbly ankles there. That should be a very impressive score for Zing. I think her teammates know it too. Watch her stick the landing here. Very, very well landed. Barely moved after her feet hit the mat, and that's one of the key things the judges are looking at. Now here is Imbralina on the bars after we had a little bit of a delay. And well done by Olivia. Bridgeport ranked 64th in the nation. They are ranked sixth in the GEC in terms of their qualifying score for nationals right now. Bears are third with Penn leading the way, 195.17, followed by Yale and then Brown. So three Ivies at the top. Then you get to Westchester, followed by Cornell. It's your last Ivy rep. Bridgeport, Southern Connecticut State, William & Mary round out your GEC rankings entering play today. And tough and ball there in the vault for the Bears. That doer had a little bit of a problem there, unfortunately, for her with the landing there. Take another look at it. It just didn't quite, look, it would appear, complete the rotation. Doer had a career high on the vault last week. Tough to replicate a performance like that in consecutive weeks, I would think. A career high, 9-8-0-0. Do were also named All-Ivy for the vault. One of three Bears to earn All-Ivy honors on February 24th at the Ivy Classic, along with Cora Spadell and Lauren McEwen. And here is Julia Bedell. She has scored at least a 9.925 on the floor in each of her last five meets. But of course, here we're taking a look at the vault. How's that for speed? Good flip. Well done. A little hop at the end, but not bad at all from Bedell. 
Catherine O'Coin on the bars here. And the dismount, a little bit of an over-rotation. Fell back just a little bit. Obviously important to stay standing there at the end. Here's another look at Padel. Sort of crow hopped at the beginning to pick up some speed. Not a lot of people know this about Julia Bedell. I think Brown fans do, but she is a very successful YouTuber. She produces her own videos, which I have to tell you, I've watched more than a few of them. She does an amazing job. An amazing job. you got to check it out. I think that's my uh, my, my post-game assignment, post-meet assignment. I'll check it out this afternoon. And another look at the most recent beam for Bridgeport. Making some adjustments here, the Purple Knights. Not a bad drive up from Bridgeport to Providence here. I would think an hour and a half, two hours in the bus. Yeah, two hours max, I would think. One nice thing about the GEC, it's one of those true bus leagues. You can travel everywhere via bus. Some trips longer than others, I suppose. But you know, This Bridgeport team, too, coming off of last week's quad meet at home, scoring their best team score of the season at 195.025. And it was their senior day last weekend down in Bridgeport. Sepulveda getting some last minute instructions here. Sepulveda was the gymnast we highlighted in the opening for the Purple Knights. She is one of their most prolific gymnasts, sophomore from Woodbridge, Virginia. Business administration major. She is taking her time, getting in the zone. Away she goes. Good I vertical think. handstand there, clean exchange. Good looking transition, barely flinched. She grabbed the low bars. Back to the high bars. Once again, good vertical extension. Going to come down to the landing. A little off on her right leg, but all things considered, a pretty good turn and dismount. Yeah, a little bit of a deduction, deduction on the landing, but on the bars, I thought she was terrific. Almost flawless on the bars themselves. You're probably looking at something in the 9.6 to 9.7 range. And here she is building up some power for that dismount. Need two full spins in the air for Landon. Now you see Lola. With the Bears done with the vault, they await the bars. And, of course, when the Purple Knights are finished on the bars, they will head over to the vault themselves as the Bears try to stay loose and stay warm. These teams not done with one another this season. They're also going to face off next week at the University of New Hampshire quad meet. That's correct. Hosted by the Wildcats, also featuring the Temple Owls. It'll be a 2 o'clock start next weekend up in Durham. Next Sunday, to be exact, St. Patrick's Day. And it's on to the GEC Championships in New Haven for the Bears and the Purple Knights. We mentioned the Purple Knights last weekend winning that quad meet. Now the Bears finished in second behind the Purple Knights. Finishing just ahead of Rhode Island College in Talladega. Tough end of the season for the Rhode Island College women's basketball team in the Division Three Elite Eight last night. They had been undefeated. Yeah, terrific run for them. Oh, looks like we're ready to go here on the vault once, uh, pardon me, on the beams once again for Bridgeport. Samantha Noakes on the bars. Pretty good transition. Left hand maybe a little loose. Got back to the high bar, no problem. Nice and vertical. Good switch. A little trouble on the landing, nearly fell forwards, but should still be a solid score. Samantha Noakes, a sophomore. She used to compete at the University of New Hampshire. 
Originally from Austin, Texas. So she's been around. Got a first year student athlete up next for the Purple Knights, Emily Hernandez. And she is far from home. Hills from Downey, California. Health science major. Competed at Majestic Gymnastics in the club circuit. He's going to round out. This portion of the competition. Hernandez, if I'm not mistaken, won the bars competition last week in Bridgeport. Defeated all comers. I believe you are correct. She stands. scored a season best score of 9850. Pretty good. Yeah. She stands five foot three. All about the leap here when you get the shorter gymnasts. They can move, they can fly high. Doesn't really matter how tall you are. If you can extend as these athletes can, it doesn't matter. Grab hold of the high bars to the low bars, no problem. Well, Hernandez is underway here. Good long hold on the low bar. Plenty of vertical, but missed her mark for the high beams. And that's tough for the Purple Knights. Hernandez expected to be their top scorer in this event. I'm gonna reapply some chalk to her hands and give it another go, but this will hurt her score a little bit. Emily back to give it another go. Starts off on the high side this time. Almost slipped there at the low end, and it's a tough routine right now for Hernandez. You know, it just shows you how how difficult, how fickle this sport can be. You know, coming off a, a season best performance a week ago. And Emily having some minor issues here today, but sticking with it. I don't believe we've seen that yet. Somebody standing on top of the low beams. And a pretty good landing there at the end for Hernandez. The double rotation before dismounting. That'll conclude Bridgeport's bars competitors. Could have some exhibitionists. Yeah, they may have a, a couple of exhibitions, but each team, for those of you unfamiliar with the sport, you have six performers in each event, and the top five scores are taken. The low score is thrown out. And anything after the sixth performance, which, you know, that is your anchor person, considered to be generally the, the best at that particular event on your team, uh, those would be exhibitions, and those scores will not count. And as we showed you prior to the start of the bars for Bridgeport, they had two scheduled for exhibition. Almost akin to if you're watching a golf event, I suppose, and maybe the amateurs come in after and play the hole. Not that these are amateurs. So I believe this is Maddie Viles, if I am correct. It certainly looks it. Viles, a sophomore from Janesville, Wisconsin. Competed for the Lake City Twisters. I like that name for the club. Sounds like a minor league baseball team does. name, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and nobody would know better than Tim Gear, the athletic communications assistant here at Brown that is in charge of, among other sports, the sport of gymnastics. Tim wears a different minor league baseball cap 
almost every day to work, and we ask him every day, oh, what's that one from? <laughs> I have one minor league baseball cap myself. It's a defunct Ooh. team, and well, more on that in a little bit. Is Viles lost her transition there to the low beams? It's a Paw Sox hat. The now defunct, as you mentioned, yeah. Pawtucket Red Sox. Now the Woo Sox up in Worcester, Massachusetts. Yeah. You, won't, you won't catch me with any Woo Sox gear, that's for sure. <laughs> oh, Viles going to get right back up and try again. Oh, well done with the landing. One of the better landings we've seen. Take a look at the landing again. Nice job traversing the beam. Spun around nice and clean. Didn't have a ton of speed. It did help her stick the landing, I think. In a few moments, we'll have one more exhibitionist here for Bridgeport on the bars. It'll be Brown's turn over on the bars, and the Purple Knights will head over to the vault. And after that's done, it'll be the beam and the floor for the respective teams. Second season, of course, here, Brown for Brittany Harris. She captured the Ivy Classic last season in her first, se first year. Led the team to the USAG Nationals in her first season. Eighth appearance for the Bears overall. They've made them, made it six consecutive seasons from 2013 to 2018. And back to back. So here's our last exhibitionist for the Purple Knights. And that's what these exhibitions are for, too, to get your work in, your competitive work in, in a competitive environment. As opposed to just practice. Right. And, and obviously, the not that the stakes are dramatically higher. You're not getting scored here. But you have a crowd looking on. You don't always get that in practice. Well, that pressure, it adds up. This is good experience for the athletes when they are asked to be in that top six rotation. Try to get in the anchor position someday. And there's a look at Coach Harris. Yep. Talking to assistant Sophia Heiderali. Heiderali in her second season here at Brown. Alaska Anchorage, class of 2020. Best known, of course, for their men's hockey program out there in Alaska Anchorage. Talk about a long way from home or a long way from your alma mater. <laughs> So the two teams will switch it up now. The Bears will head over to the bars. The Purple Knights to the vault. Take a look at the Brown roster. Sort of the breakdown by state where everybody's from. There's nobody from Alaska. So we're going to take a quick break here, it sounds like. And then we'll be back for the Brown portion on the beams. You're watching... GEC Gymnastics on ESPN. Switch events here. Brown now moving over to the bars and Bridgeport moving over to the vault and take a look at some of the scores. This is the vault rotation, I should say, for Bridgeport. And Kieran Ross is going to lead things off and keep an eye on Nova Starik. She had a 9.825 last week. Also going to have a few exhibitionists for the Purple Knights. We talked about Lola Sepulveda earlier. She is also in this rotation. 9.8. Very good score. Emily Hernandez. We saw her competing on the bars as well. So there you see the rotation for 
the Purple Knights. The Bears heading over to the bars. We'll take a look at their rotation here in just a moment. There you see it right there. Dewar, Wiener, Marcus, McEwen, Davis, and Asta Farrell. So Dewar didn't compete in the bars last week. See how she looks today. We also, at some point here, we'll take a look at how Brown did in the vault portion and how Bridgeport did on the bars. A couple of impressive scores for both sides. And it's very close through the first portion of this meet. Yeah, well, the Bears had some career highs. In fact, three of them on the vault, Emily Ford and Lauren Kramer, each tying their career highs. Ford at 9700, Kramer at 9775, and Julia Bedell. The 9850 ties her career high on the vault, which is also fourth all time in program history. Ho hum, just another career high for Julia Bedell. What a season she's having. Remember, she's only a junior. Take a look at some of the Brown leaderboards all time, the individual records, and Bedell is safely up there in both the vault and the floor. In fact, she's the all time leader in the floor exercise. Almost all of the top. Eight or so scores belong to Bedell. And here is Sophia Dewar leading things off for Bridgeport on the ball. Didn't get a lot of height there. Yeah, didn't unfortunately get to finish the rotation because of that. As you mentioned, went more out than up and didn't complete the rotation to stick the landing. And on the bars for the Bears, here is Ross. Or excuse me, Ross. Yep. I believe this is Dewar. Dewar. Excuse me. Dewar. Dewar with a nice-looking routine so far. She's deliberate. Nice. Oh, well done. Well done. What a way to start it off for the Bears. You don't expect that maybe out of your first performer on this event, but... Dewar just really raised the bar, pun intended. Very methodical up on the high bar. Excellent spin, and I don't think her ankles moved a, an inch when she landed. That should be a very good score, and the coaching staff seems to be aware. And how's this? She gets the, <laughs> the bear head. Sophia Dewar playing the part of Bruno after that strong performance on the bars. Dewar all Ivy in the vault, showing she has a few more aspects to her game. Back over to the vault, we're going to take a look at Olivia Imbarlina. I believe she'll be next up for the Purple Knights. Well, this is uh, Singletary, I believe. You are correct. <laughs> all right. Singletary, not much height, but a decent enough landing. Tamira, sophomore from Scotch Plains, New Jersey. And here is Wiener on the bars for the Bears. Wiener, one of the seniors here for Brown. Excellent rotation. Back to low, doesn't escape the ground at all. Makes it look easy, back up to the high bars. Climbs around. The landing is not bad. Well done, McKenna. Take another look. Swung around. A little step forward there, but well done. Second to go on the bars for the Bears. And he'll get Bruno, a <laughs> turn is Bruno as well. <laughs> Nice little tradition. You know, the University of Miami, they have that big chain for the football team when you make a big play. That was Emily Hernandez. Able to land, and we're just not seeing a ton of height from the Purple Knights on the vault. It affects some of their scores, and that's one of the biggest things for the vault, what they're looking at. It's all about the speed you gain leading up to it, and then the leap. You see Tim Lewandowski, assistant coach, giving some last-minute instructions to Liza Marcus. Liza Marcus is a sophomore from New York City. 
attended the Chapin School and is a member of the Gotham Gymnastics team. Flies his career best 9775 on the bars. Split screen here. We're also going to take a look at the vault for Bridgeport. Next up would be Abigail Kenny. We'll focus here on Brown. Here is Kenny. A little leap forward there at the end for Kenny, but she got some good height, and that might be the best landing we've seen by the Purple Knights in the vault. Back to the Bears, and it's Marcus. Good tuck. Gets vertical. Swings back around. And she didn't look satisfied with herself there at the end. Nope, didn't get to finish the performance and get into that final rotation for the dismount. And there you go. Right foot moved a little bit at the end, but a nice land in, all things considered. Marcus's routine on the bars generally consists of a glide, kip cast, handstand. Here is Seppel Beta on the vault. Takes off sprinting. Landed facing back towards the vault. Nearly stumbled forward, but remained upright. Take another look here on replay. Lauren McEwen will be next up on the bars for the Bears. McEwen, a senior. Career high, 9.825 just last weekend. She has a lengthy routine. Springboard high bar kit mount. And you'll see a cast handstand and the giant hat. You and another Bears gymnast from the Lone Star State. She's from Austin. And here is Starrick on the vault for Bridgeport. Short well strides done. from Starrick. Good landing. Starrick has a big cheering section here, it appears, Scott. And that makes sense. She's from West Boylston, Mass. Not all that far from... Brown's campus, maybe 45 minutes to an hour up by Worcester. Here is McEwen. McEwen trying to one-up herself from a week ago. Nice vertical handstand there. Looks good so far. Great rotation to the low bar. Swings back across. Gets vertical again. Did tilt a little left. Now trying to get plenty of height for the dismount. I'll tell you what. She may be close to that career best. As her transitions were outstanding, I thought. Her verticality on the handstands were very strong. And the dismount solid as well. Hands remain nice and, fir nice and firm. No signs of slippage. And again, taking her turn is Bruno. As we move back over to the vault, this is Samantha Noakes. No, I apologize. This is Lola Sepulveda. No, I believe these are the exhibitions, if I'm not mistaken. I believe this is Weingart. Brooklyn Weingart. On the vault. I think you're correct, Scott. I think they have Weingart and Walker set to go on the vault. And there you see the replay of McEwen. 
Very solid performance on the bars. And her teammates seem well, to know that it was a great performance. There's Gracie Walker. As an exhibition on the uh, vault, not seen on your screen, but here on the bars, we will have Maya Davis for the Brown Bears. Davis, a junior from Brooklyn. Falls backwards onto the high bars. Good tuck. No. Uh, tough transition there. Unfortunately, the bar got into her body. You can't have that. Take two for Davis. Stuck the landed. Solid finish. And Asta Farrell will wrap things up in just a moment on the bars for the Bears. Asta Farrell, also from New York City. Seems to be somewhat of a hotbed of gymnastics talent. Did Avenues New York High School, was members of the Chelsea Piers NYC Gymnastics. 9875, Asta's career best on the bars. Hoping to approach or best that here. That would be something. Starts off facing sideways or standing sideways to the low bar. Waiting for the go ahead from the judges. Asta, one of seven seniors, who will be honored at the conclusion of today's meet. She is in the zone, Scott. Just waiting. No distractions getting to her. Couldn't tell you exactly what the holdup is, or this is just part of her routine, nice and deliberate. As the Purple Knights have finished up their vault. The vault generally goes quicker than the bar is anyway. I think we're waiting for the judges' score, if I'm not mistaken, on Maya Davis before they give the go-ahead to Asta. And a little bit of a delay, so Asta's going to go chalk up. That kind of alleviate those sweaty palms. Looks like we're going to see Abby Liebhardt as well as an exhibitionist in the bars. Liebhardt, a junior, and was mentioning this earlier, she is from Eugene, Oregon. Well, the judge is taking some time here deliberating. It was a little bit slow for Bridgeport as well. See the judges there in the midst of discussions. You want to make sure you get it right. That's the biggest thing. Well, they're clearly well, they're having a good time, that's yes. for sure. Yeah, nothing acrimonious about the debate, whatever it may be. Asta has resumed her position, waiting to start anchoring the bars for the Bears. But the judges are being very deliberate here before allowing her to get underway. And finally, we are going to have a score 9 5 8 5 for Davis. And I believe Farrell will be given the OK right here. A little bit off of Davis's career yep. best. Here's the OK. Long wait for Asta. Let's see how that affects her, if at all. Great posture on the low bars. 
Good swing back to the high. Good transition again. Excellent climb while staying vertical. Doesn't hit the ground. Takes her toes to the low bar. Swings back to the near side high. All about dismounting now. Clean landing. That'll draw the applause of her teammates. I'd say worth the wait for Asta Farrell. Frozen by the judges a little bit. Didn't seem to impact Asta. Good performance on the bars for the senior. Her career best performance on the bars, 9.875. We'll have to see if this challenges that. The landing was so great. I just wonder if she had enough speed during the dismount. But she's getting her turn as Bruno. Took it away. Here's a look at the fans in attendance here at the yeah. Pensatola Sports Center. Good crowd here today at the Pits. Good showing of both Brown and Bridgeport fans rooting on their respective squads. See a lot of purple in the stands. You don't see purple a lot during Ivy League matchups. Uh, purple's one of the only colors that's not a primary for any Ivy League schools. That's correct. I think the nearest purple to Providence would be Holy Cross, right? The Crusaders, although Stonehill, uh, Stonehill right? Stonehill, certainly. Yeah, a little bit closer. Uh, equidistant, maybe. I don't believe any of the Division Three schools in Rhode Island have purple. So Liebhart will be performing exhibition here. Career best in the bars, 8.125. Liebhart is excellent on the beach. She's gone 9.7 in the past. Trying to work on her bar game and good looking transition. Wouldn't nick the ground at all. Stands back up. Over to the near side high, gets vertical. I'm in swing and dismount. Legs came back a little bit. Lost her balance a little bit near the end of the routine. Yeah, they got up to a real nice start there. Just kind of over-rotated in that handstand on the high bar. Kind of couldn't get it back in the other direction. Take two for Liebhart. Good switch of the hands, and it's the landing she's having a little trouble with. Something to build on. She's a junior, so she'll be back next year. And again, bar is not necessarily her best event. The beam is where she tends to shine here for the Bears. We'll have a first year coming up for the Bears, I believe. Talia Blythe also in an exhibition, unless that's it for the Bears. Well, Blythe hasn't competed in an event yet this year, but we were told prior to the meet by. It looks like the Bears are done with the bars here, though. <laughs> so hopefully we'll see Blythe at some point. May not be on the bars. And so if that is the case, we'll take a break. We'll be back here from the Pistola Sports Center, Brown Bridgeport. Halfway home here in the dual meet in Providence. Kicks, front kicks, side kicks, back kicks, sachets, grapevine. That's the same thing. These things. No, no, you got it. What?
regular season, Jake Levin back alongside Scott Cordishi, and we're taking a look at the Brown beam rotation, what you might expect in this portion of the matchup. It's going to be the beam and the floor. Brown will begin on the beam. Bridgeport on the floor. Liza Marcus going to lead off. At least that's what we saw last week, and it looks like she will be starting on the beam as well for the Bears. Lauren Kramer, Jessica Lynn, Lindsey Yang, Angela Zing, and Emily Ford. Round out the rotation. Zing, uh, pardon me, Yang did not compete in the beam last week for Brown. They get a few exhibitionists in as well. Yeah, Wiener and McEwen. And we're just about set to get things started. Bears on the beam, Purple Knights on the floor, and then the two programs will switch once they've completed their rotations. We have been told that... Uh, Kieran Ross, who is scheduled to be third in the floor exercise for Bridgeport, will not be performing due to injury. And it looks like they are replacing her with Margaret Coyle. So O'Coin, Singletary, Coyle, Starrick, Kenny, Sepulveda, and Turner in the exhibition. Hope that Ross is able to return at some point before the season ends for the Purple Knights. She is a senior from Reno, Nevada. Transferred to Bridgeport from Rutgers. We're taking a look at the floor right now for Bridgeport. Going the junior from Austin, Texas. One of my favorite towns. I don't know if you've ever been to Austin, but it's a great place. I've heard great things. They've never been to the Lone Star State, though. Sounds like some Mario Kart music is part of this routine for Bridgeport. So what are you looking for on the floor? Well, you want good height in your tumbling passes, obviously. Nice job you on want, the landing. You want to be tight and straight in terms of your body form. And, of course, there's the dance element as well that the judges are looking for. Really nice job there from a coin. Good start for the Purple Knights. The Captain O'Coin. Bears have yet to start it on the beam. They will be momentarily. Liza Marcus. Saw Marcus on the bars for the Bears as well. She had a 9.2, followed by a 9.15. You see Liza, her career best, 9825 on the beam. This is her best event. Of course, on the beam, you were looking for, above all else, balance, right? That's why they call it the balance beam. <laughs> they want to see you keep that balance through all the moves that you make. Any type of wobble, of course, would result in some type of deduction. For my money, this might be the most challenging event. You just look at where you need to land, where you're flipping, and there's very little wiggle room. You have to be more precise here than maybe any other event. Jake, most of us have trouble staying steady on our own two feet on the floor. Forget about a balance beam. That's just inches wide. It looks pretty good for Marcus. No movement on the landing. Not a ton of height on the dismount, but I don't think that mattered. Good, good. twirl. Coach and staff teammates fired up. We're back over here on the floor. This is Tamira Singletary. Singletary, corkscrew, spring, and land. 410 sophomore from Scotch Plains, New Jersey.
Looked like she was getting ready to do a backflip a few moments ago. We'll see if that is part of her routine. Sprint here from Singletary. Dance, of course, a major component of these floor exercises in the women's game. Full speed again, good corkscrew, good land. Well done. Quick look at the judges, and then back to her teammates. Over on the beam now for the Bears is Lauren Kramer. Second event of the day for Kramer. She performed very well on the vault with a 9.8. And 9.800 is her career best on the beam. Kramer, one of the seven seniors on this Brown roster. She'll have to mount once again. Getting a little, just a, an inch or two of air on her twirls there on the beam. Balance, the concentration. Adding a little dance flair to her beam routine. Looks like time for the dismount here. Some happy feet at the end, but able to remain upright. Not a ton of air off her dismount. Would still be a decent score. So two have gone on the floor for Bridgeport, two on the beam for Brown, and now here is Coyle, who has moved up to that third spot. Margaret was to exhibition, but due to the injury to Kieran Ross... Margaret's been moved up to the three spot on the floor. No pressure. This is going to count for Coyle from Lansdale, PA. Springy landing there from Coyle. Coyle again, a little extra flip. Yeah. Her music blends in well with her routine. Just slightly short on the rotation of that last landing. Slightly short. But a good performance for someone who has been pressed into service here from an exhibition up to third in the rotation on the floor exercise for Bridgeport. Well done. Nice seamless little front flip there to end it. Back over to the beam for the Bears. This is Jessica Lynn. 
Well, I think Coach Gallo has to be happy with that performance, right? Quoa getting pressed into service and performing nicely on the floor. And on the beam here is Jessica Lynn for Brown. Jessica Lynn went 9.900 on January the 28th. They're her career best. And that was the Brown try me when Alaska Anchorage and Southern Connecticut State were in town. Lynn maintains her balance. Getting ready for the dismount. Maybe a little lower than she would have liked. Looks like her left leg got loose a little bit, but her teammates still seem to love it. And we'll take their word for it. Here's another look at the dismount. And hey, she's taking her turn as Bruno. She did something right. Maybe she just can't bear to watch. I'm sorry. Oh, Scott, is a, is I'll be a, here all night. As a new father myself, I'm very here for the dad humor, the dad joke. So I'm all about it. All right. Now up on the floor for the Purple Knights. Should be Nova Starik. Seen Starik earlier. She was the anchor in the vault routine for Bridgeport at a 9.8. First year student athlete from West Boylston, Massachusetts. And as Starik performs on the floor, for the Bears on the beam, it'll be Lindsay Yang. You should take a look at your split screen. And for the double flip. Split, split screen here, and there's Yang. Yang on the beam went 9.875 for her career best on February 19th. That was a pretty fancy move there by Yang. Starik hey, over committed to her landing. That's right back to her feet. Yang, nice seamless rotation. Staric soars down on the floor. Yang likely getting ready to dismount momentarily. Not before a couple nice backflips. Purple Knights swarm the floor after that performance from Staric. In the meantime, pretty but, good performance there on the beam by Yang. Now, just a slight loss of balance on that. Take another look as she gets set to dismount. The backflip. Always a little more challenging. Yeah. They look pretty routine. Up next, Angela Zing will be on the beam for Brown. And Olivia, uh, pardon me, Abigail Kenny up on the floor for Bridgeport. And we'll look at Kenny now. And then over to the Brown side. Kenny had a 9.700 in the bars earlier for Bridgeport. Also in the vault, a 9.775. She's one of two all-arounders. For the Purple Knights, along with Sepulveda.
And he is sophomore from Brick, New Jersey. He's a psychology major with a minor in education. Now over to the brown side, you can see Zing. Mm -hmm. Zing up on the beam. Best performance for Zing on the beam, 9.875. Did that on February 19th. Yeah, a couple of weeks ago. Almost all of your career best performances for the Bears have been this season. 19th, that was the All-American Challenge. And Zing loses her balance there. It was a very good day for the Bears at the All-American Challenge. They scored wins over Bridgeport, LIU, New Hampshire, Westchester, and Yale. It was only the Owls of Southern Connecticut State that nipped them. And showing over in Uncasville, Connecticut. Finishing up on the floor there was Kenny for Bridgeport. Getting congratulations from her teammates. Sepulveda will be next. Final performance on the floor for the scores that will count for the Purple Knights. Lone event that Sepulveda is anchoring for Bridgeport, but she has been a factor in both the bars and the vault as well. Emily Ford. Up next on the beam for the Bears. Emily Ford's your anchor. Saw Ford turn in a 9.700 on the vault. Formed second in that rotation. That little pep talk before she takes to the beam. Ford. Ford on the beam turned in a 9.875 for her career best on January 28th. Ford, a freshman. We get the split screen going. There you see Sepulveda on the left of your screen, performing on the floor for Bridgeport. And on the right of your screen, we have Emily Ford taking to the beam. Sepulveda, very nice. Three front flips on her way to the landing pad, but her routine not over yet. Back across, there's Ford. Wow, was that clean. Ford on the right side of your split screen here. Maintains her balance as she's getting close to the end. All about the dismount coming up. Sepulveda looks like she's going to get a running start here for something big for the Purple Knights. How's that? Well done. Some of the better landings we've seen today. So it's Good like performance on the floor by Sepulveda. And likewise on the beam for Emily Ford. You see why both are the respective anchors for their squads in each event. Swarmed by their teammates. Take another look at the end of Ford's routine. Well, side dismount there. Rarely seen, but Ford's a big believer in it. See what her score comes in at is... We're neck and neck here through our third rotation. It is certainly going to come down to the final switch here when Brown goes to the floor and Bridgeport goes to the beam itself. Got some exhibitions here on the floor. You see right there on your screen, that is Emily Turner, the first year from Madison, Indiana for Bridgeport. On the beam for the Bears, it is going to be McKenna Wiener, I believe. Wiener and McEwen, I believe, yep. uh, will both be exhibitioning. 
Wiener with a career best 9725 on the beam. She's done that three times. I think part of this is senior day. It's their last home meet, so give them a chance to get out there, even if it will just be for an exhibition. One last chance before the home fans here at the Piz. A 9825, I believe, was the score for Emily Ford on the beam. And that falls just short of her career best 9875. Bridgeport after today mentioned they're going to be part of that University of New Hampshire quad meet with the Bears next weekend, followed by the GEC Championships, and they hope to be sending some players to the USAG Collegiate National Championships that are hosted by Westchester University this year. Those are going to be from April the 12th to the 14th in Westchester, PA. Good save there by Wiener. And they're getting ready for the dismount here. And well done. I'll tell you, great exhibition for the senior there, McKenna Wiener. The side dismount. Let's take another look. Wiener, good hand control across the beam. Sticks it. McEwen, I believe, will do an exhibition as well, or is scheduled to. Wiener from Weston, Connecticut. They see Laura McEwen getting... So her instructions from Sophia, in her first year as assistant coach here at Brown. Seen McEwen already today in the bars for the Bears. Her score did count there, and it was a not too shabby 9.775 coming out of the fourth spot in the rotation. That match for the best bear showing on the bars along with Asta Farrell. The best score we've seen from a bear today was Julia Bedell's 9.850. She anchored the vault. Yet to see anybody get a 9.9 or better. I should say, Julia Bedell had a 9.9 .9 in her second try on the vault. Average of her score is 9.850. Right. What's the two judges? They average the score on the single vault. Here's McEwen. 9800 is Lauren's career best on the beam. And performing in an exhibition here on Senior Day. One of seven Brown seniors. Members of the class of 2024, they'll be walking through the Van Wickle gates in just a couple of months. It's going to be here before you know it, middle of May, be closer to the end of May here at Brown. Should mention to our viewers that aren't familiar with Brown University, the Van Wickle gates stand just in front of University Hall, which was Brown University when it was founded hundreds of years ago, but... Uh, the tradition holds that when you enter Brown as an incoming first year or freshman, 
The Van Wickel gates are opened inward, welcome you, welcoming you to the campus. Nice dismount there by McEwen. A couple side dismounts in a row here for the Bears. And upon graduation, those Van Wickel gates, they open outward when you leave College Hill. Take a look at the dismount here again by Laura McEwen. Great rotation and control on the side dismount from McEwen. So the two teams will be rotating spots. And that will take us to our final break between the beam and the floor. Brown coming to the floor. Richport to the beam. You are watching GEC Gymnastics here on ESPN. Big Apple, New York City. First time that the Brown men's team has qualified for Ivy Madness. And maybe take a look at Bridgeport, who is now on the beam in their rotation. So we're going to be starting off with Ryan Tompkins here. Tompkins did not compete in the beam last week. Lola Sepulveda, Molly McAlevy, Mac Abby Kenny, Olivia and Berlina, And then Hannah Berry is going to be your anchor. We haven't seen Hannah Berry Yet today for the Purple Knights, but she is excellent at the beam. And so Bridgeport feels very good about the, its chances with her up there. And saw the brown floor rotation as well. Here it is again. Lauren Kramer lead things off, followed by Liza Marcus. Angela Zing will go third. Lindsay Yang, who did not compete last week, followed by Maya Davis. And then, of course, Julia Bedell. And it's going to come down to Bedell. She's been the GEC Specialist of the Week Three times already this season. Keep an eye on Yang. She was the newcomer of the week on February 21st. So they're probably two most important athletes coming up in this rotation for the Bears. And your overall score right now, 1.4, pardon me, 145.375 for Bridgeport. 144.375 for the Bears. And you saw senior Allie Lowe will be performing on the floor in an exhibition, essentially starting this afternoon off and ending it as well. Not bad. Lowe did an outstanding job on our national anthem. Oh, Bears getting ready here. They have not lost here at the pits since 2022. Take a look. They've got a full point to make up here. As we head into our final rotation. It doesn't seem like a lot, but that's that's a big point. And we need some strong performances on the floor are the Bears. Bridgeport looking to get it done on the beam. And walk out of here with a win in this dual meet. Bears had the lead coming out of the first rotation when they were on the vault and Bridgeport was on the bars. Since then, it has been all Purple Knights. Taking a look at Brown's first floor performer, it's Lauren Kramer. Tompkins in the split screen on the beam. For the Purple Knights. Couple of nice flips from Tompkins, able to maintain her balance at the end. Tompkins, sophomore from Atlanta, competing at the Georgia Elite Academy. Methodical along the beam. Quick swirl to turn back the other direction. Meanwhile, Brown on the floor to the left of your screen. It's Kramer. Kramer, a senior from Downers Grove, Illinois. Remember the Aerial Gymnastics Club. Getting ready for her dismount. Tompkins, a bit of a walking landing, I suppose, but stayed upright. But pretty solid performance. Not lose her, did not lose her balance. Really did what she needed to do as the leadoff on the beam. 
for Bridgeport. Kramer with the double front flip there, and her routine comes to a close. I'm going to go back and take a look at how Kramer managed. Not a bad job on the landing. Her ankles stayed relatively firm. Liza Marcus coming up on the floor for the Bears. Meanwhile, over on the beam for Bridgeport, going to be Lola Sepulveda. Sepulveda's all around score right now 29.325, same as her teammate Kenny. Lone two all arounders competing today in this dual meet. Liza Marcus, career best mark on the floor was 9.825. That was back on February the 17th. Her floor routine, the first pass generally a round off double tuck, followed by a leap pass switch side half. Second pass goes to a round off one and a half. A front layout, leap pass. We're over here on the beam with Sepulveda though. Back to the split screen. Marcus looks like she'll have her first big run on the floor. Picks up speed. Double flip. Plenty of height. Faces back the way she landed. Sepulveda across the way for the Purple Knights. Both athletes with a little dance routine going on right now on the floor and beam respectively. Here comes the dismount from Sepulveda, tumbling soon as she left the beam, but able to land on her feet. Isa Marcus will be getting ready for one more big run, you would think. Here she goes. One, two, three flips and lands. Marcus also had a 9.825 on the beam for her career best. That was actually last season, February 26th, 2023. Take another look. Look at determination there from Marcus. Sticks the landing on her floor routine. It will now give way to Angela Zing. Angela Zing for Brown and then up for Bridgeport, Molly McAlevey. First time we've seen McAlevey compete today for the Purple Knights. McAlevey is a sophomore from Bayville, New Jersey. Played at Central Regional High School and competed at the Precision Gymnastics Club. They're still waiting for Zing to get going. We see Angela Zing. Her career best is 9.825 on the floor. She's done that two times. Right now you're looking at Molly McAlevey.
Levy able to recalibrate up on the beam after her first leap nearly went awry. Looks like she is just fine here. Quick twirl, and it'll be her dismount. Draws the most attention coming up just a moment here, you would think. Looks like she'll do a front dismount. Won't be much of a running start. Wow, a side dismount. Pool to Saul with the backflip. Sticks it perfect. Very nice job by McAlevey. Teammates certainly fired up. Let's take another look. Looks like she was just getting ready and expected her to do maybe a double front flip off the front. Instead, no. Corkscrew back, side dismount. Nice job. There's Angela Zing. Zing is senior. She's from Massachusetts. Devons, Massachusetts. Played at, or competed, I should say, at the Bromfield School in Central Mass. Let's take a look at Jing. Has the floor to herself. Take a look at some of the national rankings right now while you keep an eye on Zing on the floor. Good looking rotations there. How's that? Oklahoma with the top national qualifying score. Followed by Cal, LSU, Florida, and Utah to round out your top five. And Brown 61st in the nation right now. A score of 193.675. That's ahead of Bridgeport for now. 193.030 for the Purple Knights. Taking the beam is Abigail Kenny, one of the all-arounders. Zing on the floor, 9.825 at the Bridgeport Quad. Good landing there, backflip. Zing's first two times on the floor this season. A little inconsistent, but her teammates love her performance here. She started with a 9.525 at the Brown Tri-Meet. Struggled to an 8.700 with the rumble and tumble. But since then, she has been at 9.775 or better. And has either stayed the same or gone up in each of her last five times out. Let's take a look at her ending here. Really nice backflip to end it. That should be enough to match the 9.825, if not a little bit better. Trying to get a look over at the scorer's table. No sign of a... Score just yet. The Zing followed by Lindsay Yang. He's fourth in the rotation. Meanwhile, right now you're taking a look at Abigail Kenny. Kenny on the beam for the Purple Knights. Good landing from Kenny. Quick step back at the end. There is Lindsey Yang, the freshman from Hillsboro, California. Waiting to get going. Ying prolific on the beam for the Bears. 9.875 on February 19th was tied for the 
Fourth best score with a 9.925. That was way back, February of 2001. We're watching Bridgeport on the beam right now. And the Bears need to make up a full point in this final rotation of the day. Back to our split screen is Yang has taken the floor. Yang's career best mentioned that 9.850. Peaks at the floor and the beam thus far for the Bears. Picks up some speed. Three flips. Fell back a bit on the landing there. Still pretty impressive. This is Yang's first time competing on the floor since the All-American Challenge on February 17th. It was the LIU quad meet where she had that impressive 9.850. Fourth time in all this season competing on the floor for the Bears. Yang with a run. A couple of front flips to a back flip. Back to the front flip. Really nice job on that, Landon. Nice job by Yang. Take another look at Yang's grand finale here. Coach Brittany Harris impressed. Brittany Harris, the fourth head coach in Brown program history. And the Bears, their perfect record at home here under Harris is on the line. Not lost at home here at the Pensatola Sports Center since 2022. Looking at Olivia in Berlina right now for Bridgeport over on the beam. Back to the split and Brown up next. 